gonna go, uh, first of all, thank you for joining the call. Uh, I'm just going to explain briefly the structure of these meetings. This is our first monthly meeting, and the way these, these meetings are structured is the following. Um, from 10 to 1, only downstate agencies are joining us. Um, of course, all the groups are welcome to join if they want, but basically the idea is that during the first uh, hour from 10 to 11, we're going to cover general updates uh, relevant to the city uh, and um, general to the city and Long Island. And then um, we're going to hear from, we would like, we want to hear from you. So in, in general, you should always come prepared to share, like keep a, keep a, a, a log of, of things that you would like to share during the month, things that happen in your, in your communities that you think are, are significant or are meaningful to share with other groups uh, in your area because the idea is that we, CSS is, uh, like we are all building a learning community for, uh, in terms of what, what, what is relevant to our program. So as you go through the month, uh, keep, keep this in mind because there are many things that you, that your experience may, your communities may be facing that are very important to share with other groups. So you're going to have uh, time during this during this first hour to share those experiences. Uh, if you need feedback from other groups or from CSS in terms of advice or how to address particular problems or, we, or you just want us to, to celebrate together a success, uh, that this is the place to do that. Uh, Leon is going to give us more detail uh, later on about how much time specifically each, each, uh, each one of your groups will have, depending on how many people are we have for the meeting, so he's going to guide us through that later on. So that's the first part of the meeting. The second part is the, is the training component, and today that's going to be led by Carolina. Uh, that's from 11 to 12. During that portion of the training, we're going to be joined by upstate groups and also uh, other groups from the, uh, the New York State Health Foundation Enrollment Program. It's a program of um, a group, it's, a, it's, a group, it's, a, it's a partnership of groups that are being led by the New York State Health Foundation that are doing enrollment education and assistance. So just be, be, be aware of that. They are going to be joining us for the training, uh, for the training component, which is from 11 to 12. And also upstate folks are going to join us for 11 to 12. After that, everybody from downstate uh, can, can leave the meeting if they, if they decide to do so. They can stay for the upstate round, case rounds, uh, which are from, from 12 to 1. So the same thing that we're going to do with you guys between 10 and 11 is going to happen with upstate groups from uh, 12 to 1. Is there an opportunity to share their stories, their cases, what they're seeing, and to get feedback? And uh, so that's in general the structure is, three, is, is divided into three three parts. Um, so let's start with the first one. With the, so now let's start like officially our first um, 10, to, 10 to 11 meeting. Uh, I want to give you some uh, updates. So you, I don't think this is an update that has to come from me. Like you are all, I, I'm sure you have all experienced uh, trying to get into the, into the uh, New York State of Health website and uh, having fa facing delays and a little bit of difficulties. We all knew that there were going to be glitches. This is a very, it's a major, major uh, program uh, that has, that, that is being uh, introduced and, uh, and it's hard. And 10 million people have already tried to get into the website. So uh, part of the, the delays are due in part because so many people are trying to get information and, and enroll. So what we are trying as navigators, and this is important for you guys to be mindful of this, is to keep a positive, a positive spin to this. I know that internally, and I want you to share your, your concerns with us, and your, I know that you, we all have been a little bit frustrated, but in terms of what happens outside to the public, we know that the ACA is, is in constant attack, and we know that many people don't want this to work, but we have to be like the positive enforcers of this, like we have to make sure that there's, that, uh, there's, that nobody has um, an opportunity to give this a negative spin. So please be mindful of that. 
I don't know if it, not everybody is going to be talking to reporters from your organization, but anybody inside uh, who, who does, keep be mindful to, to just express how what you can do as a navigator right now. Because right now, if people are having problems accessing the website and having problems accessing the phone system for the exchange, they are still being able to see navigators. So we are the ones really facing the public and saying we have to be patient. This is this is a the reason why they, why they are delayed is because there's a there's a lot of people uh, seeking information. Uh, so right now we should all have uh, Leon have been sending some emails from some information that we received from the state in terms of accessing the website. We should you should all have received. Um, some co uh, information to log in, and you might be in the process to try to register. You might successfully done so if you did. If you were able to successfully register, uh, let us know because the state wants to keep track of who has access already to the to the to the to the portal and who and who doesn't. If you haven't, uh, keep trying, keep trying, and be patient. Sometimes the the, the pages take a, a while to load, but but some people have already, with patience, been successful. Um, so with that, I think that we want to hear from you. From, so from us, just to give you a, 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 some, some information about what happened here in, in, in the, with the helpline, we got over 200 calls in one, in, in what was it, like two, two hours? Over the course of the first day. Over the course of the first day, we had two out, two, two, 200 calls, which is what we usually get in, in a week. So that was amazing. And we are making appointments, and we are giving people information about what options are there in terms of financial assistance. We are doing this using the, the premium calcul estimator that the state made available, and Carolina is going to guide us through how to do that uh, while the glitches uh, are solved. So now let's let's start with you, with you guys to hear what what is going on. Leon is walk us is going to walk us through through the through the list of people who are participating on the call. <laughs> All right. So good morning, everyone. You know it's really awesome to be part of history, seeing that the Affordable Care Act is now in in full swing, and we all have the opportunity to be a part of it. So we're going to go through our case runs now. We're going to go in alphabetical order with the downstate organizations. I see that Flora from Asian Americans for Equality is already on the webinar. So we're going to unmute you. I'm going to give you two minutes. Could you tell us uh, what has the interest been for your organization? Have you been able to do pre-counseling with clients? Um, you know, just tell us what your experience has been thus far. Um, so everyone can hear me now? Yes, we can hear you loud okay. and clear, Flora. Okay. Okay, good, good. So, um, Afi, um, right now we got a lot of phone calls, um, so we try to, you know, a lot of people actually just kind of heard from the kind of media about the, uh, the, the brand, and they are confused because uh, sometimes the media change the, uh, you know, the federal program, right? So it's in the, like, newspaper A session. So it's, it's talk about the federal and how the shutdown might affect, you know, that sort of thing. And then in the local news, uh, could you know, might talk a little bit about the uh, New York State, uh, the 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 uh, any A five five number or the website, and you know, mention us and the you know Charles B Wong that sort of thing. So people are confused because some you know the information are not the same, right? So you know, we kind of try to clarify some of the information. We try to get you know their story or their interest, and uh, we start to uh, schedule them uh, appointments and uh, kind of. Uh, prepare them. Um, some, you know, question is simple and quick. Uh, some it's more, you know, kind of need to go through uh, more details. Uh, so we ask them because a lot of times when they, you know, they they roughly want to know uh, about like how much subsidy they might get, and we can kind of give them the estimate by uh, use the uh, New York State website. However, uh, a lot of times they they don't know like uh, they, their real income. You know how to so we we suggest them kind of bring their uh, supporting documents so we will help them to uh, analyze that as well. So, so okay. far, a lot of phone calls and, you know, like scheduling appointments and uh, in three office, so. Flora, have you been able to do any enrollment or have you no. been able to sign like, in yet? 
personally, I couldn't get into the my password and the okay the login. Yeah, it's still you know last last night I tried it again. You know, still something I didn't get okay. through. Okay, and and none of my counselor, the other counselor uh, in Queens, couldn't get it on um, into either. So. Oh, not in the system, yeah. Oh. And actually, what we're going to do right now is uh, for everyone, actually, who's on the call, please raise your virtual hand via the webinar feature and let us know if you've been successful in getting in the system and if you've done any enrollments. We want to hear from folks who have been able to do enrollments at this point. So and just tell people how to raise their hand, Drew. Okay, so there's a little hand sign in the webinar part of the um, the little, little sidebar. It's on the right hand side. It looks like an orange hand. So hit the orange hand, or you can type it in as well. We'll be able to see that too. Just give us a couple minutes to um, get everyone on the line. Just a minute, please. So if you have not entered your audio PIN, please do so at this time. You can find the audio PIN in the white box in the sidebar of the webinar software. I think we could start with Greg Otten. Who has Greg Otten. Are you there, Greg? Hi. Uh, you're asking about the uh, site. Yeah. No, I have not been able to be identity proofed. I have a tax ID, the New York ID. And I get so far in the process, it blocks the, it won't let me enter a home address. Okay. And uh, this morning I got one step further where it asked for my social security number, uh, but then I couldn't get any further than that. So. Yeah, great. This is Elizabeth. I got past that to the token thing, but now won't accept my token. But for people who are having problems putting in their home address, just move past that section and then it'll come back and ask you to re-enter your address. That was a tip from Becca Telzak at Make the Road and that seemed to work for me and then I got to put in my social security number and move along. Others, well, I got uh, anybody else on that, has anybody gotten through the Navigator uh, identity proofing? It's if you do, the moment you get, can we do this? The moment you get through the navigator identity proofing, can you email Leon and let him know? I assume that means, since no one's gone through the navigator identity proofing, I'm assuming that means no one has been able to effectuate an enrollment yet, which is fine. I haven't either, much to my own frustration. Um, okay, then I would like to keep going group by group, but I just wanted to get a sense of anybody have been able to do any enrollments or get through the website because I think that's important information to tell the state and this is the downstate group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I see we have uh, John and Glenn from the Business Council of Westchester. You didn't enter your audio code so I'm, I'm not able to, you know, get some feedback and if you were able to register, um, if you've been able to do some pre-counseling with clients. So uh, John and Glenn from Business Council Westchester, if you could just enter your audio pin so I can unmute you. Uh, we already heard from Greg Otten from Sydney. I see we have Liz Babir from Emerald Isle Immigration Center. So uh, Liz, we're going to unmute you. Liz, did you, w were you able to register, was anyone, any staff members able to register uh, with the New York State of Health website as a navigator? No, from our organization, no one has could register. We just get to the screen where ask us about our address. But after that, we couldn't do anything. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, not, yes. Not very well. Oh, sorry. Now? Can you hear me? So you couldn't get past what? Well, we couldn't sign up. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Not really. You couldn't sign up? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Yes, we could. Uh, yeah, we receive our uh, ID number. Code. Code. Yes, the code invitation, I'm sorry. But we, we couldn't um, sign up. Okay. Are, 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 were you, 
These are the instructions uh, that we received yesterday from Leon, but uh, we couldn't get to the page that you request the uh, social security number. We couldn't get to that page. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Liz. I see we have young okay. sub. So we thank you, thank you, Liz. Um, we're going to move to the next organization. Uh, I see we have a uh, young young sub Shin from uh, uh, KCS. Green Community Services. Uh, I don't know if Minja is with you, but if you could just let us know if you were able to register and do with the New York State of Health. Young Sook, are you on the line? Yeah. Yes, good morning. Good were you morning. Able to, were you able to register with the New York State of Health website? Yeah. All right. Awesome. You got through the identity proofing process and you were able to create a username and password with the New York State of Health? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. My sister works. What? Okay. No, no, no. What is it that you just saying? No, I, Young Sook, we didn't understand what you just said. Yeah. Um, uh, when, I, uh, uh, when I am moving, uh, I, I'm not sure that my password. What? Okay. Oh. Sure that's oh, okay. All right. So you can after the meeting, you can give me a call, and I can uh, walk you through the steps uh, on how to create a New York State ID, and then how to go through the steps in terms of registering with the New York State of Health. Yes, I'm. I'll I'm here. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Minja Hong from KCS. You were just talking to my colleague. Yes, Minja. Go ahead. Hi. No, she was not able to get through. I think she was uh, mistaking the New York State ID. Um, she has not received an invitation code yet as well. I have received my invitation code. I've been uh, trying to log on every hour starting from 7 p.m. last night. Uh, it has not worked. I keep getting the, um, I get through to, you know, where you're supposed to put your invitational code and organizational code in but then it will not take me past that point, and when it does, it is an error message. Okay. Uh, thank you, Minta. <coughs> All right, great. So we're going we're gonna to move to uh, LaGuardia Community College. So I think that the, so as, as it says in, uh, in Leon's email, we are interested in seeing those error messages. The state has asked us to show them to them, so if you can do a, a a screenshot and email it to Leon, appreciate it. That we help them identify what the errors are as well. I know, I know that's what they're talking about right now. No one has been able to get on. Oh, okay. All right. No one has been able to get on. Are people, what are you doing? Are you doing free enrollment counts? It's like the most retarded conversation ever. Okay. Minja, we, Minja, we can hear you. All right. All right, so maybe we should okay. have this retarded uh, conversation anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to move to Make the Road New York. We have uh, Becca Talzak. Uh, Becca, we unmuted you. Have you? Hey. Have, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. So I I got past the registration piece, and what I got done was uh, when I got to the agreement, um, I didn't care about this, so I got to the session after the registration or the identifying proofing piece. And it, the agreement looked like it was an agreement as if I was a broker. Um, and so I didn't sign in. I didn't email Carrie about it. And I looked up at the top of the screen, and it said my login had the dash sign and then broker next to it. And so I think for some reason something was confusing. It had me as a broker, and so I haven't been able to get it. I didn't sign the agreement just because I felt uncomfortable saying that I was licensed with the state. So I haven't gotten past that piece. But I don't know. Okay. So that was my I challenge. But Becca, can you talk a little? Uh, have you done? Have you been doing pre-enrollment education to? Continue? Yeah. So yeah. So we we've gotten a lot of calls, and I think um, it's a, it is a little overwhelming. I think in each of, like in Brooklyn, we have about 50. In Queens, we've had about 50 calls every day. Um, and so we're we're doing the best we can. I mean, we're speaking with people and trying our best to like give them as much information as we can and set up appointments for next week, um, hoping that by next week we'll be able to have the system up and running. But we're trying to give them as much information as we can now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's just a lot of questions. I think in Long Island also we've gotten a lot of calls um, and people who are just confused about what Obamacare is, what the Affordable Care Act is, what they're eligible for. So we've been trying our best just to get as much information as we can on the, on the basics. 
Mm -hmm. So I think that it's important for, for everybody to be aware that as, as the system speeds up and we get all registered and able to use it, we should be doing pre-enrollment counseling and we send a premium, premium estimator and we, for those of you who have been using it, that's great. For those of you who haven't, Carolina is going to walk us through uh, how to use it. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Becca. All right, John, we are ready for you. Uh, Business Council of Westchester. What's going on up in Westchester, John? Hey, Leon, how are you? And I think Glenn Ganaway, our navigator, is uh, on the line, too. Uh, yeah, it's been a busy stream uh, since uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, we've had, uh, as of 10 o'clock this morning, uh, 54 calls come in. Uh, some businesses, a lot of individuals. Um, uh, and Glenn is going through and talking to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, he reported to me this morning, and he can, if he's on the line, he can give you more detail that he did get his new number. Um, I don't know if he's been able to uh, access this. Um, we are still waiting from, and then Leon, you've been great in keeping me updated, but we're still waiting to get approval from the state that we can put in the, 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 uh, the uh, button on our website which clearly had the New York State of Health logo and our logo and would give people information on how to reach out to our Navigator program. But we obviously haven't put it out on the website yet until we get this approval. So anything you guys can do to push it along, it's a pretty basic thing. It's, it shouldn't be a con anything controversial at all. Um, but anything you can do to help us move that along, that would be great. We have gotten some good press. Uh, Glenn was interviewed on News 12. Uh, that's been looping over the last two days, uh, so that I think has been helpful. They've been running a, a crawl underneath uh, about giving our phone number uh, to um, to uh, set up a time to meet with the navigator uh, and a few newspaper articles. And I will send that report to Jeff. I sent the brief update to Liz and Jeff, but I'll do the format that they wanted to. And then again, I remind everybody that next Thursday, October 10th, we're holding a healthcare forum. Um, which I think now will even be hopefully more informative for people to attend uh, because on the panel uh, will be Liz Benjamin, but also uh, uh, Danielle Houlihan, who is the Deputy Director of the New York Health Exchange, uh, who will I hopefully be able to give us an update on how the first week went and what we should all be expecting uh, over the next uh, few weeks. Our message to folks on the phone has have been that we need everyone to, you know, to take a breath. Uh, this is a new system. Uh, it's a huge sea change for everybody, but the fact that people are calling so early is, is a very positive thing. But we're just going to need everyone, you know, to, on both sides of, of the phone to, to be patient, and we will get through it uh, and work through the technology. Glenn, I don't know if you're on, if you want to add anything from your enrollment process, if you have what you've been doing with the folks you've been calling. Yeah, um, I'll add here. Um, greetings, everyone. This is uh, Glenn morton Uh Pleasure to be here. Um, I'm dealing mostly with a lot of pre-counseling, um, telling people what, I'm, it's like backing up, uh, wishing all these people had been a part of the education process that we've been uh, rolling out, so many of us, um, doing a lot of pre-counseling um, pre and answering very, very simple, basic questions. Uh, of the 20 calls I returned, uh, I've been able to return and speak to people. I've made uh, only four, only four people were ready to make an appointment. I have I have received the number, uh, the uh, access number, but each time I go on, and I've tried for a couple of days now, every couple of hours, um, not been able to get in. It says it's just too busy. Bear with us. Come back later. Um, it's literally on the first link. I'm not able to get past uh, the link that's in the email. Not even able to enter any codes or access or anything. Okay. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, I just wanted to say that I loved how John talked about this. That was really positive and good. We have um, received some feedback from the state that they would like us to, um, it, apparently there were some navigators in our network um, interviewed and sort of shadowed in the Albany area, and the state felt that the interviews were not as positive as they could be because people said things like, wow, they're a little disappointed that they can't get through the website. Obviously, we're all very disappointed we can't get through the website process, but it's really, we have to be mindful not to say that to a reporter, but instead say, well, we don't under, you know, we are not technical people, so we don't know what's going on with the website, but we're really excited to help people, and we can do pre-enrollment counseling now, so please come in, make appointments, you know, with us. We're here to serve people, and we can't wait. We know our 
clients, our businesses, our consumers are really eager to get coverage and we can't wait to, to, to get them into coverage and we will be able to get them into coverage over the next six months. Um, so, you know, if you do get, you know, uh, surprised by a reporter, try to keep it positive like John was doing. Okay, awesome. I see we have LaGuardia Community College. I see Janice is on the webinar. You did not enter your audio pin, so I won't be able to open up the line to you. So if you can uh, just please enter the audio pin. It's in the one of the boxes there that you can see. Just enter the audio pin, and then I'm going to call on you. Um, do we have anyone from uh, Manhattan? Is uh, Marcy from the Manhattan Chamber of Commons here? Okay. Let's see we have uh, Northern Manhattan Improvement Corporation. Let's see we have Root and Dahlia on the line. So we're going to open you up, uh, Ruth and Dahlia, Northern Manhattan Improvement Corporation. Could you please let us know uh, what's been your experience uh, thus far? Any pre-enrollment counseling, any calls? Ruth or Dahlia, Northern Manhattan Improvement Corporation. Dahlia, are you there? Uh, Ruth? Hello. Yes, Hello. Lord, hear you. Hi, how are Leon? Um, so it's me, Ruth, and Grissel from Northern Manhattan. And right now we're able to do pre-screening enrollment. Um, we only have one of our navigators who was actually able to get through the whole proofing. The ID proofing. So we have one. Yeah, so we do have one, which is awesome. We haven't been able to enroll anyone as of yet, but we have one person. So we're doing it one at a time right now. Uh, so she just finished hers, so now we're going to see if we can get in. Okay, so which which person, which staff member? Uh, Grisel Hernandez. Ah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're All right. welcome. All right, I see we have Rehan from the South Asian Council. <coughs> okay, Rehan, you have to enter your audio pin so I can open up the line to you. All right, so I'm going to uh, kick it out to Staten Island. Uh, if you can, I uh, see we have Linda from Staten Island. If you can please let us know what's going on out in Staten Island. Hi, Leon. Hi, everybody. Um, we're actually uh, in the process of training. Our first training was this week, so the person on my staff has been at training uh, the first, the second, and today's their last day. Um, I've spoken briefly with her. She said it's uh, a lot to absorb in three days. Um, we did get uh, numerous phone calls. Um, we just we happen to have had an annual meeting about two weeks ago, and then our local newspaper was there, and they followed up. So they actually did a whole um, article on the front page of the Advance the first day of enrollment. They said to call the chamber, so we've gotten lots of phone calls on it. What I've instructed my staff to do is just say that we're in the process of training, take their names and numbers, and we'll, we will get back to them early next week and set up appointments. So that's kind of where we've been. Um, uh, one of the other things is that I, I guess um, – one of the things I was trying to do, too, is I gave a lot of people the 800 number as well on the first day uh, because they were looking for immediate information. And um, they were also looking for other locations on Staten Island. Now, I'm aware of some of the other locations. And I went to the website, but it said conditional next to some of them. Is there is there any way with, that we can find out who the other navigators are in our specific areas so that uh, if people want to go, you know, in a different location or if it's not close to their home or whatever the case may be, we can refer them there. Okay, so we'll... Uh, I think we'll, we'll try to figure that out. In the meantime, you could send people to the um, State of Health, you know, marketplace toll-free number and maybe they know who's actually doing appointments and where in, in your okay. room. Um, okay. I think I would do that as a fallback just because um, the website we know for a fact just because some of our own... Uh, stuff is not up to date. They're a little slow to post stuff, and the, and the toll-free number might have more um, up-to-date information. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, obviously, okay. they have bigger fish to fry than posting venues right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. All right, so we're excited about that staff person that's completing navigation. Yes, I am. <laughs> so are the rest of my staff. They can't wait until she starts. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, thank you. All right, we have the Retail Action Project, Flor Ramirez. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, so can you guys hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. 
So I was actually um, able to be identity proof, um, and uh, so I went through those first steps. Um, I just can't, like, you know, actually uh, enroll anybody yet because of um, the error message that it says, but at least that part is over. Um, we've been able, the phones have been ringing like crazy, both here and um, our locals in uh, Long Island. Um, so we're just making appointments for starting October 7th, and we are pre, uh, you know, doing the pre-screening for people using the calculator, and it's working out pretty well. That's awesome. Great job, Laura. That's awesome. So, something that did happen that was a kind of, um, a, the Wall Street Journal was just, I don't know if any of the other agencies had this. So someone from the Wall Street Journal stopped by October 1st, like literally uninvited, just came in, right? And then she told me that she was doing that for all agencies um, on the list, on the website. And that was, um, I felt a little aggressive. Um, I told her that, you know, we were receiving a lot of calls that we just uh, decided to start taking appointments because some of my staff is going through training right now. Um, but that was interesting. Did you tell us, did we, did we report that to the state? We should probably report that to the state that that happened. Okay, I will. So there was no official um, interview. I mean, I just kept yeah. to the talking points, but I will, I will send that email. Yeah, just send that to me because it's also important for the state to know. I mean, we've experienced the same thing where we're just suddenly getting cold called by the press. And um, mm -hmm. I think it's important. If anybody gets a, just a drive-by by a reporter, even if, you know, don't be shy. Even if you didn't say exactly what you wanted to say, tell us what you said so that they yeah. don't get an ugly surprise. Like if we no, get no, no. private with them, they're happier than if they find out after the fact that someone, you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to take on you, floor, but I myself have had this problem where, you know, the Wall Street Journal is just like, you know, I picked up my cell phone with some number. I had no idea it was the Wall Street Journal. And so yeah, she showed, she just showed up here. She just literally like just woke up. We're like, um, we were like in shock. I'm like, are you kidding me? But yeah, she just yeah. literally like dropped by. Yeah, so just try to keep it positive, everybody, when that happens. Mm -hmm. And just shoot us an email when that happens so we can just forward that to the state saying, you know, this happened. Okay, I will. Mm -hmm. But that's it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Unless you have anything else. No, that's it. We're still like, you know, waiting for the website to be up, but we're pre-screening people and, you know, a lot of people making appointments, so we're excited about that. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Laura. <laughs> uh, so we, we have uh, South Asian Council for Social Services. We have Rehan. We're going to unmute you. Let us know what's happening out there. Rehan, are you there? You're, you're unmuted. Hi, Leon. This is Rehan. How are you? Doing okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, Leon. I just got a client who had an appointment with me during this week so I called them back and told them that because of the glitches on the main portal we won't be able to do the, do the enrollment so they didn't listen and they came today so I was just with them okay so we got a lot around so, so Rihanna, one, thing, calls. one thing we'd rather have you do is ask them if they want to have pre-enrollment counseling yeah, we did. okay exactly. yeah, I did the pre-enrollment with them so uh, they came in for the enrollment, so I just told them that uh, that we have to reschedule the appointment. I gave them a call uh, during that day, but they just came in. So okay. uh, with, the, with the calls, we had around 75 calls during the first two days, and still we are getting a lot of calls. And um, uh, we have been doing pre-enrollments and all other stuff. So That's great. Thank you so much. That's yes. great. So, and just so you know, all of this work that that we are that you, we all have been doing, we want to track it so that we can we can show how active we have been doing, and that navigation navigator work is not only like the re, the enrollment per se, but that there's a lot of uh, educational components in there. So we we're gonna give you a tool to keep track of all these efforts. And we're going to introduce it at 11 with the webinar, um, as part of the webinar. So just keep that in mind. You're going to have a way to track all of these efforts, like scheduling appointments, doing pre-enrollment education. Uh, keep track manually for that so far, but when, uh, starting today, you're going to be able to use it. The, the data. Yeah, uh, 
one thing I just uh, we just need advice as a as a counselor. So we are getting calls like people are maybe I don't know people are trying to check on us that what are we doing or uh, and then I I got a call yesterday where uh, the caller uh, she said what should uh, in a very light voice in a secret voice what should I pay you to get in the enrollment done. Okay, that's really good. You told me about this. We've been hearing about yeah. this kind of stuff in Buffalo yeah. too, where there's so, like where yeah, people I, have been. Yeah, please go on. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, and and then there were there were other calls like uh, from same person, but I think she was just trying to the person was trying to change her voice over time and again and again. And uh, when she calls, she like uh, goes on for 20 minutes, and then from uh, things to things she just moves around and uh, talks about the Obamacare and then talks about the exchange and then talks about things so just trying to distract or I don't know uh, so we are trying to stay calm and give them all the information but there are some calls that are not as uh, I, I cannot reckon them as a client or but, so if you can please explain or please guide us to what to do with this, these types of calls so could you be a little more specific? You're saying someone's going on and on, like anti-Obamacare vitriol? Yes. Or yes. Yeah, I think yes. you just say, you know, I'm sorry, we're really busy right now. Um, we understand you may have concerns. We encourage you to write your local, you know, elected official and express it there. But we're here to help people who want to get coverage, and we're going to hang up now. But, thank, you know, please. Um, you know, we, if you do decide you want um, us to help you get enrolling coverage, please call us back. And this okay. is Drew. Um, we're developing a training on how to deal with difficult clients or callers or people in difficult situations. So that's on the list. We're going to give you some tools to be able to do. But if people do feel like they're getting sabotage calls or, you know, we want to pay you calls or in Buffalo, the um, Maximus, the um, Consumer Support Center, was telling um, people that navigators could do home visits even if they weren't mobility impaired. So we want to hear, we've, we've alerted the state that that's wrong and that, you know, they need to do a corrective action with Maximus on that. Um, so if you hear about any, you know, if there's things like that, we really would like to know. And please email Leon if he's willing to receive these emails of any, like, strange stuff. Um, that would be very good for us to know about or express it here on this call. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do you we, uh, was that helpful or was that yeah. okay? Okay. And also, please report immediately any situations where you see that people are posing as navigators, asking people for social security numbers or things like that. Report them to us immediately. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rehan. I see we have James Brown from the Actors Fund. Jane. Yes, I'm, I'm here, Leon. How are you? And I have uh, Renata here with me as well. All right. And greetings to all. Uh, things have gone, been going pretty well. Like Linda in Staten Island, we have two people being trained as navigators uh, as I speak. And uh, what we've done really is to shift the appointment making to next week. And we have, let me see, we have 26 people ready to enroll next week here at the Actors Fund. Awesome. Yeah, so that's, yeah, it's, it, it's great. Um, we've also had um, people trying to get on uh, line themselves to enroll. We've got some panicked calls, and I've had to explain to them that it's not Ticketmaster, and they're not trying to get tickets to a Katy Perry concert. <laughs> that that there'll be there'll be plenty plenty of time plenty of time down the line to uh, to do that as well. So um, the right. only the only uh, two things uh, that we need at the moment is Renata needs an ID from the state. She is our only uh, 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 certified navigator right now, and she's been doing her SBAP duties, but she has not gotten an ID from the state. Plus, uh, Leon, and you know this, you get an email from me every day. I, I need to have two more people trained, uh, myself and uh, another person here at the Actors Fund. Let me back up on Renata. Is it that she hasn't been able to get identity proofed, or she hasn't even gotten the invitation email? I well, haven't even, hi, this is Renata. I haven't even gotten the invitation email yet. I'm sorry, we, I, I did not know that. We, uh, if anybody has not received an invitation email and has been trained, I mean, Renata was in my training, please 
you know, email, you know, me actually, Elizabeth Benjamin. I want to know, um, and we'll we'll get that list right away to the state. That I, I didn't know there was anybody who I didn't know that was happening. I don't. So I'm very sorry. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, all all good for us. Okay. All right. Thank you, James. Okay, we, we do have uh, some organizations that are that are currently in training. Um, like uh, James just mentioned that he has his staff in training today. Today is the final day. Uh, United Jewish Organizations, they also are part of the network. They have three staff members in, uh, they have staff in training today. And also the New York Women Chamber of Commerce, they have staff in training today. So if they were here, uh, you know, um, they'll be here for the, for the next meeting. We do have LaGuardia Community College. Uh, we're still having some technical difficulties in terms of the audio pen. Um, Janice, if you want to kind of type in something, just let us know what's happening with uh, LaGuardia and your Navigator staff. Uh, we can read it if you type it in, if you send a chat to us, or if you enter your audio pen, um, you, can, you can do that. Okay, so we still have, we have a training coming up at 11. So what I'm going to give people the opportunity to do is you can raise your virtual hand and just ask like any general questions. You just have like a, you know, maybe about two or three minutes you can take questions. Or comments or whatever. Or comments. So if you can raise your hand, we'll unmute you so you can speak to the entire group. Or if you want to, if you want to chat it in, that's um, that's also that's fine. We can read it and then we can answer any any general questions. We've had a, a couple. Uh, typed in so far, so I'll just I'm start with the ones that have already been typed in. So Karen from Long Island Gay and Lesbian Youth says, we are part of the New York State Health Foundation Network to provide enrollment on Long Island, but we are not a state quote, navigator. So should we expect a navigator invitation? No. no. Hi, Karen. So just to clarify, um, so our New York State Health Foundation folks will be joining us. Um, they are expected to join us at 11 for the training. Karen, we will probably answer your question at, during our conference call, which is scheduled for your group after the training portion. But the answer quickly is no, you should not be, unless until you get trained, you're not going to get a navigator code. So someone wanted it addressed that there are two versions of the calculator. So I don't know if anyone here wants to say anything about that. Yeah, so there are probably like, that I know at least three versions out there for the calculator. In regards to the last two, one of them, the big difference is that um, the previous version included the federal poverty level of the family, which I thought that was great because then you could determine whether they qualify for cost-sharing subsidies, right? The latest one does not, and the latest one also does not break down Child Health Plus, so it doesn't show the premium for Child Health Plus. The previous one um, did. I don't know because I haven't run some numbers whether substantively they're the same, meaning if you type in the information, the same rates are there. I'm going to assume yes, but I would have to confirm in case you have a preference for, for either one then um, let me run some numbers to confirm that that is the case. Otherwise, I would recommend that everyone use the latest one. If you don't have it, um, I'm sure Leon will resend it um, today after the meeting. And I will be um, sending it to the foundation groups as well after the meeting through an email. And we'll have an opportunity to go over it. Yes. Uh, I noticed that the instructions I noticed that the instruction, this is Carrie, I'm sorry, um, and I've been working a lot with the state on the login stuff. I've been corresponding back and forth when you send in, you know, here's my problem or my screenshot or whatever. I'm the person who's sending it back and forth. So um, in the instructions that they gave us that we passed on, I just realized that they said to where your address is your work address, replace it with your personal address. But when I tried to do that, it didn't let me. It had this, like, slash, you know, like the Ghostbuster symbol. Mm -hmm. So. Just move past that, leave your work address. You'll get a second opportunity to change your address. It'll come back and say, we didn't recognize your identity or something like that. And it'll have a place where you can replace that address, the work address with your personal address. Do it then, because they're running it through Experian, the credit company, and that's what, what's doing your identity proofing. So they're checking it against your personal address instead of your work address. But don't get hung up on that first page. 
All right. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, a few more questions. Uh, speaking to the media, we are getting calls from the press. Do we need to get approval each and every time? So there's a, the state, we, there was a call on this, and uh, I don't know who asked the question, but maybe so all, all the, <clears throat> so we, we you were all invited to, a, to a, a training that the state gave on how to address que uh, questions from, we, from the media. So I want to refer you to that, uh, that PowerPoint, but just a quick answer. Yes, we need to know every, every time you are going to you plan to talk to the media and what are the there's a there's a template there's a form that we that Leon can send you with a key questions that that we would have for a request for authorization from the state to talk to the media. This is when you can anticipate when when you're going to talk to the media. In circumstances where you cannot because like the reporter just show up the way that Floor was was saying um if you feel it's appropriate, you can answer questions, but always keep in mind the talking points that the state uh, share with us. And that has been sent. If you don't have that, uh, uh, please email Leon so that you can get it. Uh, and basically, the bottom line is keep it positive. Keep it, keep it, uh, keep it uh, with a good spin in terms of yeah, there are glitches, but navigators are already providing services. We are educating people already. And the reason why there are glitches and why they are delayed in the website is because so many people want coverage. Yeah. So that's the bottom line. But in terms of the details of what to share with the media, it's part of that PowerPoint that Leon sent. Mm -hmm. Do we have other questions? And we're going to resend that PowerPoint again just to make sure everyone has it. And it's just a few slides, and it's really good if you go to the points because it um, really guides you. And not only if you speak to the media, but if you're out there doing your presentation, if nothing else, you should always be prepared with your like five-minute closing in case um, you're out there and you just have those five minutes to carry on the message. So we only have like four more minutes uh, before the other folks join us. So we're gonna just address some of the uh, like until until eleven. The uh, one maybe one one more question and the other questions that you have typed, we will we will uh, address uh, via email uh, with Leon. Okay. So maybe one more question, Leon. So the next question: uh, We're enrollers rather than navigators. When will the enroller training be? We are feeling that we can only do general outreach until we have the training. Can we do pre-screening? How does that work? Hi, Stacey. This is Carolina. Yes, so you are a certified application counselor, and you should be getting more updates again during our conference call. I will be going over um, the, the calculator today, and you are always more than welcome to um, give me a call and let us know, and we can provide you one-on-one uh, -on -one assistance. But we're going to be moving uh, rather fast in the next few days to make sure everyone um, has what they need to do at least uh, during this period pre-enrollment counseling. All right, so thank you. Greg, we'll, we'll uh, respond to your questions via email. Sorry, we, we just have to take a quick break. Okay, so well now we're going to thank you. Thank you for being on this part of the, of the, of the meeting. Uh, any questions that we're, we're going to be addressing, Leon will address them uh, via email. So now we're going to have a quick break, maybe two minutes or maybe two, uh, three or four minutes. Until to give time for the for folks to update and from people from the New York State Health Foundation to join us for the for the training. Thank you. Go ahead and try to see if it's been set up. Give us a day or two to make sure we have everyone. So let's say by Tuesday, if you try getting in, or even by Monday. Um, Get us an email, and Jonathan and I will work together to make sure you have an account. Your username will be um, your first, the first letter of your name, followed by your full last name. Your password, it will be the same thing, but you just add a one at the end. It is case sensitive, meaning if you do not capitalize your initials, you will not be able to get in. So give it a few tries before uh, you reach out to Jonathan, who can assist you with those technical issues. Let's look at the database. I am going to walk you through screenshots as opposed to using the database online. And I wanted to do this to have a little bit more control of the time, because I think once we go through the database, it can be tricky. 
So uh, when you log into the database, you will see a screen similar to this. We started using our database this week, and those are our appointments. As Elizabeth mentioned, the information that you provide, such as last name, first name, date of birth, if you choose to include it, and phone numbers will not be uh, available to anyone else, meaning you will be the only one able to see this information. The case ID has no confidential information. It is generated by our database. Once you're here, um, you're going to go ahead and click Add New Household. So your first uh, search will be up at the top under Client Search. You then go to Add New Household in order to start. Uh, at the top, um, hand corner, you will always see the number of applications, whether they're completed or not completed. Um, right now, we don't have any applications completed, so we have not applicable application, meaning that we've done counseling, and we'll let you know how you can track those. If you select Add, you will see the next screenshot. So Head of Household, you are building your household um, information. So the head of household is literally the person that comes to you and they may be looking for insurance for themselves or for their entire family. You're going to capture their information. As you will see, none of the fields are required. We do encourage you to use this for your daily activities because whether your application is successful or you need to follow up, you will have this information saved, it's secure, and you can access it anywhere. Now, I want to uh, point some out, something out. So again, you go through the basic information, self-explanatory. For the New York State Health Foundation groups, um, <coughs> if you see the red circle at the bottom, you will be clicking New York State Health Foundation NYSHS Enrollment Network. Uh, when you input the information. If you are part of the navigator, you will be entering CNN. And the third option is not applicable to anyone right now, but we just included it um, for future reference. Again, you want to select your funding source because that will allow us to be able to, um, let's say, run reports eventually and see how, how many applications have been completed or how many education sessions have been done by the network and then by the enrollment network and then by CNN or Navigator Network. Okay, so you go to Household Information, you complete that part. Um, in that same field, uh, again, the foundation will have this option. They can select whether um, they are serving any of their special populations. So for the New York State Health Foundation, again, this does not apply to the navigators, the, the New York State Health Foundation certified application counselors are focusing, focusing on specific populations, LGBT, immigrant, and low-wage workers. So for you guys, you would select um, any of these three boxes if applicable. If you select the low-wage worker, then you can go ahead and select the, the trade. And this is a way for us to capture um, the populations you're serving and to make sure, again, that you're, you're meeting the objective of serving vulnerable populations. For navigators, you wouldn't be, they wouldn't have. For navigators, you, you would not be clicking this. I mean, if you do by mistake, it's not a big deal. Nothing happens. We'll track it separately. So, okay, we're now in the consumer information. As you will notice, remember, we completed the household part, right? So we included the applicant's household information. That automatically generated in the next screen. So here, if you see under um, relationship to the right-hand corner, it says self, because it will ask you, are you applying? And the answer for me was yes. So the, here the applicant is applying or the head of household is applying. So you just make sure that all the information is there. Now I want to point out that there is an application ID number. You will have nothing there for the meantime. We are still trying to figure out whether we can create or we can include an application ID number to be able to cross-reference the applications or enrollments you are doing. Once you complete that portion of this database, which again, if it's for the head of household, it's pretty much completed, you just simply add to make sure it is listed on your consumer list. So if you go a little bit to the top, um, consumer list, once you click add, it will be Carolina, last name, and relationship to head of household itself, right? So the next thing will be to add a client. So this is what you have already done. You've established your head of household. You added them as an applicant. You now have, let's say, children who need to be enrolled as part of the household. 
So you're going to build your hassle. So you will select Add, and then you will then populate a similar screenshot as the one before. You do not have to include um, address or email because the head of household information will probably be the same. Unless it's an adult that is applying as part of the household and they might have a different phone number and for whatever reason you feel that you need to capture that information specifically for them, go ahead and do that. Again, this process should take you like 10 seconds. Um, date of birth, it's optional. Um, again, look at what you think you're going to need in order to do your work, right? Uh, relationship to head of household on the right side, on the red circle, I selected child. So you would select the appropriate um, relationship, again, to the head of household. We are interested in age. We want to see who we're serving in regards to age. Um, and obviously, race and ethnicity and gender, all that is important for us to evaluate who we're reaching and who we need to reach out to. Um, the next six months are going to be critical, and we want to maximize our efforts. So you will click Save on that portion once you add a child or another head of another member of the household. As you will see, once you click Add, James, the child, was added to our consumer list. So now you have the head of household, Carolina, and you have James as the child. Because we did input James' um, date of birth, you'll be able to, to, to see it right at the top. If you want to continue adding children or other family members, you just continue to click Add. James will be there as, as a setup, but you just simply change the name and change the information. Once you do that, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. So you have two people there, the head of household and the child. You can select the head of household first or the child to complete the following two steps. Once you select one or the other, you need to do it for each. You can do it either way. You will then go to application status and outcome. And in the application status, it will give you the option of complete, incomplete, or um, something to the effect of not applicable. If you select complete, it will give you the next drop down options. Again, we encourage you to check off as many boxes as possible. The more information, the better. It really will reflect the work that you're doing and, again, the populations we are serving. Um, we understand that your time should be focused on enrollment. Uh, again, it's, 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 it's really important that you try your best to include that. So um, if you look at the top, the consumer name is Carolina. So that will tell you that you are completing the application status and outcome for Carolina. That is the head of household, right? And then for the same person, you will also um, click or select all the assistance you provided. And the best part about this is that you just have to click. And maybe you created an email account for her. Maybe you advised her on low-cost care options. Chances are you're going to be clicking many of those boxes because, um, you know, you probably do that at the same time for the same client. So that's all you would do for one person. I'm just going to show you, um, again, once you do that and you go back to the consumer information, you will see again the two names, right? Now you want to select James because you want to provide the application status and outcome and the assistance provided. Um, Carrie will be adding something. Give me a second. Um, I had about the, um, the assistance provided slide. One of the options is um, referred to child for post-enrollment assistance. So groups that have been part of the child network in the past, um, remember how important it was if you had the opportunity to help somebody enroll and then they came back to you for help. So we want to make a case um, to funders like the state and federal government that it's important for CBOs to be funded to do this kind of post-enrollment assistance. So every time you refer someone to, to to CSS for post-enrollment assistance, please check that because we want to be able to make the case that you have folks who need you to be trained and resourced up to do both enrollment and post-enrollment. Great. I also wanted to add, I think this is a very important screenshot because it talks about all the efforts involved in helping um, consumers. And um, you might have situations in which you so hopefully enrollment is going to be easy, straightforward, and we're going to enroll a lot of people. 
but chances are also that we might pay, we might work a lot with a consumer who ends up not successfully enrolling for many, for, for I don't know, any, any kind of, uh, any number of reasons. So here is where you have the chance to track all the efforts that you have made. Maybe you, maybe you made an appointment with that consumer. Maybe you gave them education. Maybe you have to reschedule an appointment with them. Maybe you did all of these things and at the end you don't have a successful application. Here is where we're going to track all that involved work that you're going to be doing. And I'm not sure that it's clear what advised on low-cost care option is. That's if somebody can't enroll um, in insurance, but you tell them about hospital financial assistance, you help them find a clinic, those kinds of things you could put in there. So even though if you spent all the time and the person wasn't able to enroll and you did that, we want to be able to tell the state that it's important that navigators are doing that work too. Thank you. And just to clarify, I know that there are uh, probably a lot of people out there that don't really know what CHA is. So within Community Service Society, we have our Health Initiatives Department, and then we have our um, Community Health Advocates. Um, this was based on groups out there in the community who were providing education and assistance in regards to health insurance access, including private insurance matters. We do have a helpline number here at CSS, and we continue to call it CHA, or Community Health Advocates, that anyone can call, any consumer, and you guys can refer. That's kind of like the added bonus um, in regards to being part of CSS. Whenever you have a difficult a difficult client or you have a client with an emergency, and I do get those once in a while, just give us a call. Chances are we can guide them and address their needs right there and then. It might mean that we will refer them somewhere else, but wherever we refer them, it's, 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 it's a good referral, meaning they will get the services that they need. At any point, feel free to refer to us. At the end of this presentation, you will have our number, and I'm sure you will be able to contact any of us um, to get to the right person here at CSS. So again, you go back to the consumer information page, you now select James because you want to uh, provide his application status. Again, check on the top to make sure that you are doing it for the right person. You will complete the same steps for the application status and outcome of each person and assistance provided. It might sound like a lot, but once you get to doing it, it's literally a matter of seconds. And again, this will become second nature. Before we move on to the small business um, section, which I am going to probably spend two minutes, not because I don't think uh, the small business section is not important. It's just that it's pretty much the same as the individual. Do we have any questions? But before you ask any questions um, through our, our system, uh, if there are any confidentiality concerns for the New York State Health Foundation group, we will be addressing them separately. We've heard that there are some concerns, but again, those will be addressed during our conference call. For navigators, you are by de facto our business associates, so um, it, there should be less of a concern. Um, as always, let Leon know if there's something huge um, that you are really concerned. That's why, in part, we didn't make any of the fields required, because you're going to be assessing um, what, what your needs are. Again, it's, this data is secure, and you will be the only ones pretty much seeing your, your, your performance. And this is a great tool for your supervisors uh, and for yourself if you're doing the actual enrollment, because you can show your work. It might be the down the line, uh, you know, things slow down. You want to be able to show that you assisted or counsel five clients whether or not they led to an enrollment. You want to be able to show, again, the work that you're doing. So we seem to be adding a lot of questions. We're going to try to tackle as many as possible. And the rule is that if we cannot get to all of them, we will follow up with an email. So the first question is, my organization is not listed on the communityhealthadvocates.org page. We were just approved for the grant about a week and a half ago. Just FYI, Lauren Ford at the Pride Center of the Capital Region. Uh, are you referring to the database community health advocates data .org or the oh, or, or, okay I see so there are some some groups that are still being put in particularly the groups that are on the call right now so if you haven't already been put in the system you'll almost definitely be put in the system today and if you're not in the system by tomorrow please let me know because that's probably an oversight 
So you all, you all will be in the system uh, probably before the end of the day today. Uh, next question, are we putting in all the calls we are getting from now on? Yes, please. And if you have been having like a tracking system and you want to use this database from day one and you can do so, again, you don't have to capture all the information because the fields are not required. You should capture as much as possible. But start using this database and make it yours. Like make it as much as possible yours, meaning the fields are there. But if, if this can work for you and you can type your notes as to like client needs more information, promise to call her, and you're the one using this database, use it. Um, this is a tool for you guys. Uh, in addition to just reporting and, and keeping track, use it. It should be useful, I think. Next question. What if we have both streams of funding, meaning uh, CNN and NYSHIP? Great question. So you should know when you're, you have your CNN cap and when you have your um, New York State Health Foundation cap. So um, remember, you will probably have not that I want to focus on baselines because we're not we're not going to stress about that right now. Um, you should know when what cases you're dealing with as one or the other. Yes, because when you log into the, the New York State of Health website, you'll either be logged in as a certified application counselor or you'll be logged in as a navigator. So you should report the cases. If you're doing it as a navigator, you should report that as um, as CNN and if you're logged in as a CAC, that would be a New York State Health um, Enrollment Network. It appears some of this information was collected on the telephone. Is it to be done before an appointment as a pre-qualification? I can tell you what we're doing right now to see if, if it's useful. So when, when at the end of the day, you're probably going to be collecting this information definitely if you're doing the enrollment part. Um, but you also want to track those callers, right? So if, if your system is, you know, when you speak to someone on the phone to provide them information, because chances are your clients are not just calling to say, I want to schedule an appointment. The first question is, I want to know about the Affordable Care Act. Most likely, I want to know about Obamacare, right? What's in it for me? What can I get? I heard about this. They might start with this like specific question, and then it will lead you to the rest. You probably have your own internal protocol. Here, we, we gather basic information. So the approach could be, you know, thank you for calling, and name of your agency. Uh, once you know they're interested in, in health care reform information, you can go ahead and start creating a case and, and getting their information. And I think for the most part, clients are willing to do that. Um, they, they will freely give you their information. Uh, be sensitive. Again, you're not going to go through the entire questionnaire if they just have a very basic question. Um, if you find that the question is very important or interesting, type it in your case notes for you to later on come back and, and review or share with us. Next question, do we have to do this for all the people in the household, even if they are not applying? Uh, so I think, so the bottom line is this is for to track the work, the, your efforts, right? If you want to, to let us know that you helped five people and that you screened five people, I advise you to, to, to put that you did that for five people, right? Because if you end up just enrolling one person, but you had to go with the calculator and, cal and, and, and calculate uh, uh, advanced premium tax credits and all of that for five people, here you don't have to enter their name necessarily because it's not a required field. You don't have to enter a lot of details, but if you want to tell us that it w you did that for five people, although only one ended up enrolling, I would advise you to do, the, to do it for five people. But it's also like your your judgment call, right? So mm -hmm. client is first, second, and third. Mm -hmm. Client is it's your primary objective, and, and you should be mindful of their time. Uh -huh. So, for example, if I call any of your agencies, and I have a question, and I'm the only one who's going to enroll, and I have five mm -hmm. kids, don't ask me about my kids. Mm -hmm. That is, I don't want to say that might not be relevant other than this is my household size, this is my income. Mm -hmm. I don't want to provide you with my child's name. You have to make a judgment call. You know best. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, I will leave it to that. Yeah. You know best. <laughs>
uh, we send those letters out and for the New Year's Day Health Foundation groups we will be sharing those with you. So um, the question refers to this template letter that uh, we created as a network where it will say like something to the effect, congratulations, you've enrolled, here's some follow-up information. You know, if you have to pay a premium, it will say make sure to pay your premium, otherwise you're not enrolled. We will be sharing that. Um, our, our database is it's not that fancy at this point. Um, I know that this is for the long run, so we will keep things in mind as we move forward, but for now, no. Next question is, will we be receiving a copy of the training of the database, database PowerPoint, which I assume is this? Yes, you will. And um, yes, you will. That's, that's the short answer. And if you have any questions, you, you are more than welcome to give us a call. Um, and I'll go over the small business piece, which uh, people might have more questions. Next question, is this going to be as the CHA database that I can see the cases and my staff cases as supervisor? Yes. yes, you'll be able to see all the cases within your organization, but none of the uh, information of other organizations. And we won't even be able to see the identifying information of your organization. So it's still completely confidential. And can I point out something unlike the CHA database, and again, for those who are not familiar, through Community Health Advocates, um, there is a different database that we had agencies access, and it's a lot longer, I want to say, and it requires a lot of details. If you take a look at the, the notes that I have here, you use that notes section for relevant information. We are not requiring you um, lengthy case notes, you let us know what's most relevant. Uh, we don't have a script requirement per se. You dictate what you want in your notes. The notes are for you. Mm. Okay, so be sure, the one thing in your notes, um, with your agency, you know, gather the information that you need, not more. Be sensitive to the fact that it may be confidential information. So uh, for anyone who has done casework, you are taught that you should be writing there what you can share pretty much with other colleagues, that it's not sensitive, but enough for anyone else to be follow up with the client. So you don't have to go into details, um, you should, again, Client is first, second, and third. You should be looking for the best interest of the clients. This is a secure portal. You will be able to see that, um, but be mindful of that as well. Next question. On the outreach education activity to the New York State of Health, do we need to fill the Excel sheet in manually? Yes. So um, everyone got, and our Navigator Network got, our outreach and education activity form. Although, um, you know, let me backtrack. And the New York State Health Foundation folks also got their own um, outreach and activity tracking form. We were unable, unfortunately, to include that in our database system. Again, this is a lot of work in progress, and, and, and we are doing things as we confirm things. So you would enter that information manually, and then at the end of the month, you will simply um, save upload and send through an email a copy of your outreach and education activity form. You should be tracking, again, all your efforts. We want to let the state know that it's not just the enrollment, that people don't drop in just because, just because. Mm -hmm. That it's because you are out there in the community doing all these activities, and that's the reason why people come in. In regards to your outreach, you know, you should spend your time wisely. Identify activities that you feel are going to yield results. Your time is so valuable and will be so valuable in the next six months that at the end of the day you want to think, in this activity, is, am I likely to get um, enrollment or is the purpose for me to be able to promote my agency? Um, and it's fine if that's the purpose because, again, you never know. It might take a few weeks before you get clients in. But establish meaningful relationships. Don't send your staff to, to a, a fair where you know it's not going to be the target population, where that person is going to spend the entire day when they could have been doing something else. You know best what to do in that regard. The next question, uh, I actually feel this is an important one. Does the head of household need to be the person who is actually the head of the household for tax purposes, or is it just the person who reached out to you? 
the person who reached out to you. It does not have to be the person on, on the taxes. Chances are the person that reached out to you is on those taxes, right? Because they're going to be providing you information. And I'll explain a little bit about um, head of households and income um, in the next, next segment um, after this part. And one thing that's actually come up in CSS that I think we should just address briefly is sometimes the person who reaches out to you is not a member of the household at all. For example, a family friend or a social worker. So, um, just, so don't, just don't track that person yeah. on this database. Just because this is for you to use and keep track of who to contact and who's the who are the peers the people involved in the in the in the application or what on the on your efforts towards an application. So you don't need to track that person. Right. So and you can add a consumer. You can add a consumer information without necessarily saving a household information, if that's if you want, because there's no required field. So if for any reason you are in contact with a friend, with someone who's calling on behalf of a friend, you can enter the consumer information regarding the friend. If you are screening, like if you're saying like that this is this is the income and this is how much. The, the, how much uh, uh, to determine how much what what take tax credits they are eligible for? You can still track that without necessarily having the household information. So yeah, to that extent, 99% of the time, the head of household is going to be the person who the call is about and the contact as well. But in the times when it when you're contacted by someone who is not the main topic of the call, you just put that uh, you have their phone number, the other person in the notes somewhere because they're not the actual consumer or client. So you should be able to track it. A note on social workers. Whenever a social worker gives you a call um, and, and you know, chances are if they're calling you, they have an established relationship with you and they know about your services and they just want to schedule an appointment for their client. At that point, again, you, as Nora said, you can go ahead and try to use the database to fit your needs. At some point, you're going to know the information of the actual client if they do enrollment. So at that point, you can come back to that field and complete the rest of the information of the client. If not, you can always have the social worker give the client your number mm -hmm. uh, for, for you to do a one-on-one -on -one assessment. It's difficult for me to believe that the social worker will have all the critical information. Uh, it's possible. But um, chances are you will be in contact with the client. You can just go back and revise your notes or add the client at that point. You should not be getting totally too, too many um, situations like that. Give us a call in case that's an issue, and we'll explore this further. Can a person go back and update a person as you go to the next step with them? Yes, yes. So, yeah, the cases will never be locked. You could always go back into your cases and update them as you get new information. Yeah, maybe this question came from a child person. <laughs> so you you don't have any of the limitations that you had under the child database. You can uh, no require fields, and you can go back and edit as much as you want. You can also delete cases in case you add people twice. But be careful. Yes. Don't delete them. Of course, they will ask you whether you want to delete them. And it's your work. So and it's your work. <laughs> Is the database for enrollment only, or are we also including contact info for people we, re we reached through pre-enrollment outreach efforts? Also pre-enrollment. This is for you to track your efforts. So if you talk today to 10 people, right, and only one of them enrolled, this is where you're going to be able to tell your story to your supervisors, to funders later on when we say, you know, it takes, ta it takes to talk. We have to talk to 100 people and screen them and give them information in order to enroll 20. So that's important information we want to track for sustainability reasons for the program, for your supervisors, and for you to, to, to account for what you did with your time. And I want to, uh, I went back to this slide. I forgot to mention, on this slide, there, there is a required field that says date of application. Now, you're doing pre-counseling, right? Just put for now the date that you're talking to the client. If you end up going back and doing the actual application, just um, track the date of initial call in your notes and then change the date. We're going to try to solve this issue. Um, again, you know, we created this application in, in, with a very straightforward mindset and, and 
and we didn't anticipate some of the things that are happening, but not a problem. Enter the date that you're talking to the client. If you end up doing the application, go back and change it. If you want to track when you spoke to the client, put it in your notes for now. Hopefully, we'll be able to solve this um, sooner than later. So the next question is an interesting one. Is there a calendar function for appointment times? So honestly, at CSS, we've been using Outlook to schedule appointments. And uh, to be frank, we're, we're still looking for the perfect scheduler. And if anyone has any feedback on uh, good schedules for navigation, um, please reach out to me, Jonathan Gettinger, jgettinger at cssny.org. Uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. Yeah, and let us know even through our, our current functions here at the webinar. Raise your hand or type in the name of, of the scheduling um, software that you are using. Um, as we were exploring for our own, and, and just so you know, here at CSS, we're not only providing technical assistance, we actually have all our staff being certified and doing enrollment. Why? For so many different reasons. We want to obviously help in the process of enrolling as many people as possible, but we want to be able to understand what you're going through. So we want to be able to face the same challenges to then come back and meet with you on a monthly basis and be able to address the similar patterns or concerns. So here at CSS, we have our own quote unquote enrollment process that we are following through just like your agencies where we have our own scheduling of appointments, where we have um, staff out on sites and we're seeing clients here at our, at our office, which is something more or less new to this magnitude for us, but I think it, it's a great experience, um, challenges and all. So do let us know if you have a good software for scheduling purposes. We really need to find a good one and secure, most importantly. Uh, from Binghamton, I still have not received my Navigator invitation to enroll. When will it be coming? So uh, the Navigator invitation, send, um, Leon. You have received it, and you already took the training. If yes. you, if you, and, and you took the training, so we're gonna send a uh, report that to the state immediately. Okay. So send, let us know. Let Leon know, uh, and and we will. Leon and Elizabeth on that. Please tell them that you took the training and you haven't received the navigator uh, invitation. We're gonna take just like three more questions for purposes of the database. Um, just know that you can always call us. If, if we find that there's need for an actual run through and um, me going through the actual process again, we will do an optional webinar for those agencies. We will make it happen. We want you to be as comfortable as possible and as soon as possible so you can get it going. Next question, can we use this information that we are collecting in the database for our own internal database for program management purposes? Yes, yes. You will be able to uh, run reports and we can probably not to volunteer Jonathan or myself, but we can probably help you with the process. Okay. Two more. Can, can you list questions we should ask when we first speak with a client? I prepared a tentative list, but the database has a lot of other fields. Sure. So um, we can create that for you guys. We can we can give you um, a breakdown of the the fields that we have there, um, and it may be good to just have uh, some screenshots of it as a reminder. So we can create a one pager if you feel that that would be helpful. And we already <clears throat> we have a script that we are using here at CSS and that we're going to make available to you guys. Uh, Leon is going to send it to you. Um, on how to conduct that pre-enrollment education uh, and what information is needed to do that. We'll send it to you with the follow-up email. Last question. I, I know that there's more questions, so we will be answering them um, through email or other avenues. And, and if they're very specifically related to this database and how it works, uh, feel free to call me or email me. Jonathan, can you provide them your phone number? My phone number is 212. 614-5389. And I'll be around for most of the day after this webinar, so feel free to give me a call. And email Leon in case you didn't capture Jonathan's number or any of her numbers. Next question and last question uh, that we can take for now. What information can be taken over the telephone if a consumer is not able to bring or provide all their information? 
as much information as you, you possibly can get, right? Again, I mentioned the client is first, second, and third. What information are you going to need to follow up with that client at that point? If you proceed and meet with that client, at that point you will be able to get more information. Doing it over the phone is your first step. You're going to capture as much as you can, and again, keeping in mind the client's needs, um, and then you move forward. If you end up seeing the client, you may be able to gather a little more information. Okay, so that concludes our Q&A for the database. Great, uh, great questions. We're going to follow up. This is the first time you're seeing it. I think once you get to play around with it, um, you'll be able to do it. One of the things that you can do, which is great, you can just add a client, do your household, add a kid, and then you can delete them just for fun so you can make sure. Unlike um, other databases, you, you have control of, of the add and delete and save function. Mm -hmm. And remember, no data is required. Uh, it's just to track your effort. So if you want to keep, to, to keep records of all the work you did, add it there. But if there's any concerns with confidentiality or, uh, or information you don't want to share or your client doesn't give you, if you don't have it, you, you just ha don't have to put it. No field is required. But do your best to complete as much as possible. Thank you, Nora. So small business, this is as far as I'm going for the small business for so many reasons. Um, the small business part is pretty much what we showed you, but a lot simpler. If you have a, an employer who's coming to you, especially for our small business serving groups, and just for everyone to know, as part of our network, we have chambers of commerce, small business development centers, who are also part of our small business assistance program. And uh, or have been part of SBAP, and they serve um, small businesses. A lot of sole proprietors, I should clarify, if you have a sole proprietor, you're going through the individual. Similar to the general rule that sole proprietors are going to the individual marketplace, you do the same thing here in our database. You create an individual field. If you want to keep track of whether they're a sole proprietor, please include it in your notes. Um, you will click Add a New Business, and you will just go through the business information, Again, for those who are familiar with um, the Small Business Assistance Program, we kind of mirror the information that we collected. So you will find like business name, um, contact information of business owner, application status. With the employer, you're only helping them create and establish their, their own part, right? So you're going to go ahead and help the employer establish their account. Um, unless they did that before they came to you. You're going to potentially help them upload the employee roster. You're going to help them select their premium contribution. You might guide them to the tax credits. And I know people are thinking, I know nothing potentially about the tax credits for small business owners. Fear not, we will be getting to that information um, pretty soon. Again, things are going to move pretty quick in terms of the technical support that you receive from us. And we do t tend to work pretty fast on that. And you will then complete the application status and outcome and assistance provided. One of the things that everyone should know, so once you, you finally get through the New York State of Health enrollment portal, either as a navigator or certified application counselor, if you have an employer come to you and his or her employees need help signing up, they have to come to you. Um, in order to go to another navigator, a navigator or certified application counselor, there has to be something done in order to switch that account for that client to someone else. So there's a process. I don't know the specifics of the process, uh, but if you get to that point, give us a call and we should know by then how to follow through. So let's say you help the employer and yes, indeed, the employee comes to you and they need help. At that point for the employee, you're just going to do the individual walkthrough because you will be capturing that um, employee um, as an individual. Um, you may be able to track whether they came through, through other avenues um, through the small business portion. We will have more screenshots and instructions for the small business part, and we will make that available. It is not that we don't consider the, the small business or the shop um, or the small business marketplace important. I think many of you, whether you are chambers or not, have expressed great interest in serving the small business community, which I think is fabulous. So we're going to move on unless there is, like, a burning small business database question that you want to ask, um, please do so 
and we will try to address it before we finish uh, the webinar. So Nora mentioned for the downstate groups that the training was from 11 to 12, just so you know it's from 11 to 12.30, so we do have a few more minutes here with me. Uh, the rest part, the rest of this training, it's really focused on um, the need that we thought uh, was out there. So we actually had a different presentation where we're going to go more into the substance of, of the exchanges and the nitty gritty things for you to be aware of. But um, we considered that going through this next portion was more important than that part. We will schedule another webinar. It may be optional because one of the things you should know, you know, monthly webinars are required, but you may have optional, we may have optional webinars because there may be um, a need to clarify or provide further substantive um, trainings. And we want to cater to everyone's needs, but we, we don't want to overburden people who don't need that extra training or education piece. Enrollment through the New York State of Health Marketplace, so big attention line there. So as many of you know, this is the official website. It is officially called the New York State of Health, and we refer to it now as Marketplace. There is the individual marketplace, and there's the small business marketplace. Um, the small business marketplace was formerly referred to or known as the Shop Exchange which suit for a small business health options program. This is where everything will happen, whether it's an individual out there looking for coverage and wanting to enroll, or whether you are a navigator or certified application counselor. This is your main portal. You will be signing in once you have your accounts. You will have your own dashboard where you will be able to add a client, help them set up their own accounts, and then go through the process. So I should mention that here at CSS, some of our staff were able to do a prototype and go through the, the portal uh, the day before the launch. And people were really impressed by the capacity of this database. And we are very glad that that is the case. The feedback we got was that it was user friendly. It's going to guide you step by step. Um, for those of you who did navigator training, they kept saying, you know, the system will tell you, the system will tell you. Yes, the system will guide you. Um, here at CSS, our job is to let you know what goes behind the scenes on the database because you need to be informed. One, because you may have a, a system that is not working for you, but you will have all the working knowledge you need to move forward. So that's my big introduction for the database. Let's talk about in-person assistance. I mentioned that I was going to clarify the difference between navigator and certified application counselors. Many of you have heard about this difference so many times through so many presentations, but we do have new organizations that have joined the New York State Health Foundation Network, and we want to be um, able to provide them with an overview. So navigators are state-funded, and they are certified by the state. Many of our navigators have gone through the state training process. A picture was taken during the training, and we hope they will be getting those picture IDs. Um, the state is doing a fabulous job in terms of making sure that the people who are going to be assisting clients are the people, one, that they say that there are. I mean, you are all the navigators are going through identity proofing, meaning they're checking to make sure that you are who you say you are. For certified application counselors, you pretty much will be doing what navigators are going to be doing, which the main objective is enrollment. Um, you will be educating consumers as well. But you are not funded by the state. For our enrollment network, as you may know, you are funded by the New York State Health Foundation, which is a private organization. You will also be certified, and you will get a CAC, Certified Application Counselor, ID. So in terms of the certification process, um, it will be very similar to the navigator. Last time I heard, um, you will probably go through the same curriculum as the navigator. The key difference for both for navigators and CACs is that certified application counselors do not have to see, assist clients with grievances or complaints, right? So let's say the marketplace says um, we were unable to determine that your, your eligibility for X program. Um, navigators are going to have to educate the consumer on what's the next process, what are the steps. They do not have to represent them, and I don't think you can represent them, let's say, in a formal hearing. Uh, certified application counselors do not have to do this. Chances are you will be doing this in regards to providing um, 
the education part. If at any point you need assistance as a certified application counselor because you might feel like you don't have enough information, we are here to help you. You can just let us know. We do have attorneys on staff who actually, whose job is to be able to, to do this and help consumers through the grievance and complaint process. The process will be a little bit different um, through the marketplace. The grievance and complaints process will probably be very high tech where um, the consumer can do it all online. And as far as we know, um, it will be done through like conference calls. Again, um, certified application counselors, once you go through the training, you will learn about that process and your limited role. You are highly encouraged to make referrals um, to us or anyone else you feel um, is appropriate to handle those matters. What can you do now? Many of you have already expressed what you are doing. So in order to know what you can do now, let's remind ourselves what your uh, responsibilities are. It doesn't matter whether you're a navigator or you're a CAC. You need to help consumers learn about the basics of health insurance. We will have another presentation that is going to go in depth into each of the <coughs> So do not worry. I know that this is not a comprehensive presentation, but we just need to get you to the next page. Learn about financial assistance through the marketplace. This is probably one of the biggest components. We're going to be walking you through the tax credit and pre premium estimator provided through the marketplace for you to be able to do those pre-enrollment counseling. You will then be able to identify and compare their coverage options using uh, primarily the marketplace you can do that right now on a limited basis because we only have information as to the standard plans and I will show you what you can do now through the premium calculator. The next stage is select health coverage that fits the best that best fits the budget and specific needs of the client. I cannot stress this enough. When you are working with clients, you're looking for their best option. And uh, we would love for every client to be able to have the highest uh, plan out there, but we have to keep in mind what they can afford. And it's going to be a fabulous opportunity for you to use your counseling skills and be able to get their specific information and apply it to what's going to be available. Again, substantively, we will have more training on this for those who need it um, very soon. What can you get in the marketplace? So if you don't know anything else as you're doing your pre-enrollment, I hope that you have this big picture in your head. In the marketplace, remember, the, the current insurance marketplace is going to stay. It's going to continue. But the majority of people are expected to go into the marketplace and be able to obtain health insurance through there. Medicaid will be offered through the marketplace. Um, I should point out here, undocumented immigrants cannot get Medicaid or qualify for the premium tax subsidies, but they will be able to apply for emergency Medicaid in case they do have a medical emergency. They will have some sort of card that they can go into the emergency room and present that, and they are predetermined eligible. So then they don't have to deal, uh, on top of being sick, they don't have to deal with all of the paperwork that they would usually confront, or they don't have to deal with the massive bills. Um, they might have to follow up, but th that this will be a nice way. Child Health Plus, this is um, a program where children under 19 are eligible for it. There's really no reason why most children in New York should not have health insurance. Most children, regardless of immigration status, qualify for Child Health Plus. Child Health Plus can be free for some, and it can be on a sliding scale. In comparison to what a child would get outside the marketplace or outside of this program, you could be looking at a monthly premium of $9, $18, and so on with a cap. If you have, let's say, four kids, you, the most that you would pay under any given category may be for three kids. The next big part is qualify health plans. So in the marketplace, there are private health plans that people can purchase. And in order to purchase them, people will have some options. They may be eligible for premium tax credits. They may also be eligible for cost sharing subsidies. The cost sharing subsidies are like the out-of-pocket expenses, right? So people who are eligible for those would be able to get let's say, a greater value for their plan, meaning that their out-of-pocket expenses would be less. And people can also buy full premium plans if they are not eligible to obtain the tax credit um, and or the cost-sharing subsidies. Let's uh, 
talk about what you need now. So let's create a real example. You get a client, the client calls you, the client walks in, you're out there in the community, the client comes to you, whatever format, you, you have a client in front of you um, through some medium. What are you going to need to know? Two factors. You should really know these two things. When explaining what someone is eligible for, you should remind them that in the new marketplaces, we're looking at the client's household size. So what is the client household size? Now, under the new guidelines, for those of you who have done uh, facilitated enrollment work, this is changing for you. So please uh, try to keep this in mind. It's the tax filing unit. So your question might start is like, what is your household size? Who is part of your household? And then you might do a follow-up question with, are those all the people that are claimed on your tax returns that you claim an exemption for? The person hopefully will know this. If they do not know, get their best estimate. Um, you are going to be doing a pre-screening, which means you must disclose to the client that this is an estimate, that you do not make determinations. Let me be clear about that. We do not make determinations. The marketplace will make the determinations. We can do pre-counseling and get close to a determination, but we are not in charge of that. A final determination will be made by the marketplace. So once you get the household size information, your next big thing is the modified adjusted gross income. So great, what's MAGI? We've gotten a lot of questions as to what's included, what's not included. We will be sending around a quick cheat sheet for you guys to have. For purposes of your assessment, you need the client to give you what they report growth on an annual basis. Some clients will tell you, um, well, I don't know, I'm a sole proprietor, my income fluctuates, what, what can I do? So you're going to say, you know, right now I need your best estimate. What did you claim last year? And they, that should be a great starting point. What if they say, well, I didn't file taxes last year. You're going to say, let's look at your income, especially if they're sole proprietors and have a small business. A small business. You're going to say, why, why don't you tell me what you've made on average in the last three months? And you're going to get to that number. Again, you're looking to get to, to the closest number that they can give you. You're not about to get the exact number. That is fine. You do not need the exact number. Just remind the client that the more accurate figures they give you, the closer you will be able to explore their options and, and match them with what they may find. Final key points, um, in order to be able to qualify for this program, you have to be lawfully present uh, for Medicaid and premium tax credits cost sharing subsidies. I'm not going to go into the definition of lawfully pres present. Um, Drew has sent out to the navigators, and Drew will give me that information as well for me to send out to our New York State Health Foundation folks. Um, there, there are cheat sheets. Remember, we ourselves here, despite working on this every day, we do not have uh, the answers in our head yet. We'll get there, hopefully, but we will still be referring to, to our worksheets because it's a lot of information to absorb. Let's do some examples. I'm going to do um, maybe a couple of examples using the calculator. Someone had asked about the premium calculator in regards to you know, the latest version. It is available online. You can download their latest version, the New York State of Health's latest version, um, tax credit and premium rate estimator. There are other versions that you can probably use for now if you want to provide, uh, you know, if you want to feel comfortable and just say this is the latest version, this is what you're going to go with, um, do so. So this is a premium calculator. I recommend that um, all of you have it in your desktop or, or laptop and or laptop. Wherever you're going to be using um, or doing pre-screening or pre-counseling, pre-enrollment counseling, you should have it uh, available. It is in Excel. So let's start off. Let's do uh, a family of four. A lot of times you're going to hear a family size of one and a family of four. Uh, we're going to start with a family of four. So I had already entered here. I'm going to just, for showing you, uh, I'm going to, we have to pop there. I'm going to start with two people. So you, you have a family of four, and there are two adults in the household. Um, and again, it's, it's tax filing unit. So look at that tax filing unit for the household. Traditionally, it could be two parents. Um, let's say you have two children. Be careful here. It's going to be um, asking you, well, the second one is, I'm sorry, I already um, 
made an error here. So total number of individuals in your tax household. Remember the filing unit. So if they tell you five, then it's five. Uh, if only four are applying, you still put five. It's the tax filing unit. Why is this important? Because you may have someone who's claiming their mother as a dependent, and that is possible and it's allowed. So in that case, you would be entering five, and that's going to matter because it's going to affect the premium tax credit amount that they get. So um, you enter, for our purposes, we're going to enter four. There are four people, and all four people want to apply. You have two adults that want to apply, so you put in two. Let's say um, we have in the household no one who's 19 through 25, um, and there are two children who are uh, under 19. So you go ahead on that field and put it in two. The next question, um, it's going to be the annual taxable income, the modified adjusted gross income. Let's do $60,000 for our purposes. So you put in the amount. Again, you're looking for the gross amount. Select the level of coverage which you are interested in. I'm going to take this opportunity for those who may not be aware of, of, of this part. So one of the, the key points of the Affordable Care Act was to make it easier for consumers to shop, right? So there are um, what I call different categories. I'm going to say five, and I'll explain why the fifth one. But usually you're probably going to say four categories where people can choose from. All these plans are going to have the same, 10 same essential health benefits. They are going to vary, however based on the type of network and based on your monthly premium cost and your out-of-pocket expenses. So I think if you can picture in your head what are like, let's say, three cr critical factors that, you know, would a person go for a bronze level, silver, gold, or platinum, and again, I'm going to explain a little more about that. You are looking at the type of network. You want to make sure that the client, if they have medical needs, you really want to make sure that um, they find the doctors that they need. You don't want to enroll a client in a plan that has none of their providers. That's not going to be helpful for the client. A tip there is, um, you know, before we meet for an enrollment <coughs> session, I want you to call up your doctor and ask the doctors or your providers what plan um, they are taking under the marketplace. They need to find that out. So the next question will probably be, what if uh, there's no doctor? Let's start with the client calling and seeing what plans obviously you, uh, the client might need uh, to ask a blank question to the provider. The provider should know this. They're pretty savvy. Their staff usually have the list of all the participating um, health plans. So you do that. Um, so the next question is how much premium can someone afford, really? It's not how much do you want to pay. It's really how much do you want to, you can afford. So there are all these levels. Uh, the Bronx level is kind of like a little bit below the standard level. The silver level is next, then you have the gold, and then you have the platinum. As you go up from the Bronx, Bronx to the platinum, the premium uh, increases, but the out-of-pocket expenses decreases. Um, if this does not make sense to you because I'm going really fast for those who are new to this, don't worry, you will hear this so many times that it will become second nature probably within the next week and a half. So at a Bronx level, you can uh, figure that the plan is paying approximately 60% on average of the benefits of the expenses incurred by, by the client. Silver level is 70%, uh, gold is 80 platinum is 90%. If you want to get the, the cost-sharing uh, subsidies, the client has to be below 250% of the federal poverty level. Again, for those of you who have not heard this information, you will know it. They have to choose a silver level plan. They cannot get the cost-sharing subsidies in any of the other plans. For the premium tax credit, they can get their tax credit and apply it to a gold plan or platinum plan. Let me mention catastrophic. Um, that's only available for people who are under 30. And what that covers is uh, preventive services and three primary care physician uh, visits per year. 
it doesn't really cover um, much else in the sense that you wouldn't be paying for all the services you get uh, because it is a catastrophic place, a plan. This is like worst case scenario, you know, I get into a car accident, I incur $100,000, um, there's a limit to how much I have to pay and it's around $5,000 to $6,000. Being able to have that security is good, and again, it's only for people who are under 30. What are you going to do at this point? So you're not about to explore all the options unless the client um, is asking you, and it's your judgment. You should always start, in my opinion, with a silver level plan. If the client is aware of the different levels and they're asking you straight out, um, I want a gold plan, go ahead and do it. But remind them that if they choose a gold plan and they're eligible for the, the cost subsidies, cost um, sharing subsidies, they cannot use it in the gold plan. Your next, the next question is like what county um, are you in? I'm going to go for Chautauqua. You select the county. Why do you need to select the county? The rates are based on the county, not region. That was a lesson I had to learn because, uh, you know, we all got uh, those premium rates and they were divided by region, so I was doing math by hand and using the region, and I learned that, no, it's by county. That's why county is so important. Uh, here, the next information, it's great. So you put in the silver level plan, explain to the client, this is the, the, the standard plan that we should explore your options there um, as a starting point. So all families are, um, have a, a max that they would have to pay, and that is a percentage in, based on their income and household size. For this family of four making 6000 living, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't choose Chautauqua. I should probably choose Chautauqua because I, I, I'm having a hard time pronouncing there. Uh, I promise I will get all the names right. Um, for Chautauqua, so you have 8.19% of the annual household income that the family would have to pay. For every month, the premium tax credit is $409. That's a really, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. 409 is the monthly cost for the second lowest silver plan. So um, the system uses that second lowest cost silver plan to set up the amount of premium um, assistance that someone will get. Here, for every month, it is $140 with 87 cents. If we go down, you will be able to see uh, what is available for this family. And you see all those options they have. This. Um, for five plans available to them. The first part calculates the total premium for the entire family. Uh, the next part tells you the premium tax credit. As you will see, the premium tax credit is the same regardless of the plan you choose. So you can grab your premium tax credit and go anywhere with any plan. Um, the total cost is column C. So if you look at that, uh, for a family of four making 6000 the cheapest plan is 409 Now, you might have clients or you yourself will say, this is so not affordable. How can this be? Let's keep in mind that right now for an individual, if they were to go out there in the current market and try to find a plan, you are looking at $1,000. On average, in the individual marketplace, um, premium rates drop by 53%. So it, it may seem high. Again, you're going to explore with that client what they can afford. It may be that there they can afford that. Uh, it may be that um, you know they want to explore a different plan. We don't encourage clients to look into um, the Bronx plan in the sense that you really have to educate them on the out-of-pocket expenses. In regards to premium, it may look better, and it may not look that much better if you see the differences um, in cost, but the out-of-pocket expenses may be too high, especially if they're eligible for cost-sharing assistance. They should really be going with um, a silver level plan. Again, if they have children, the children should be going into Child Health Plus, and their out-of-pocket expenses are very little or nothing. 
So whenever you're in doubt, you, all children should be going into child health plus. The system will determine that. But uh, for your pre-counseling, you want to explain that to, to the parents, that their children are likely eligible for child health plus, and the premium for that portion is, is a lot less. You should know that if there is a premium for the kids under Child Health Plus, that is not included in this calculation. It is in addition to. And that's something that we'll be providing more training on and explaining in part why, which is just a, a matter of fact at this point. Um, so we selected the Bronx Level Plan. If you can see, it does drop with Health Republic freelancers. Um, they can get coverage for 295 with 69 you want to warn them about uh, the Bronx issue that their out-of-pocket expenses um, may be um, more if they go for that plan. Let's do um, a platinum plan. Let's say they want to go um, to the highest level. <coughs> you notice they're still having to pay the same amount in terms of contribution, the 8.19%. Um, they they will be getting the same premium tax credit. So again, it doesn't matter what plan you choose, you are getting the same one, the same amount, and that amount is based on the cost of the second um, level silver plan. If you look at here, the premium for a platinum plan uh, on a monthly can vary from 733 to over 1,000. Once you apply the 140, you can see there, 592. What I've noticed is that if you compare from the silver to gold to the platinum, you're looking at a, a, about um, a hundred and change difference with some of the plans. So you really want to explore what are their medical needs. Um, can they really afford the extra premium on a monthly basis and, and deal less with the out-of-pocket expenses? Uh, you will become savvy on how to do that as, as, as you um, counsel more people and as you hear different situations. Uh, this is a starting point. This is not all of it. There is so many other features of this um, spreadsheet that uh, I could possibly go into right now that I could explain, um, again, in regards to the behind the scenes. I'm not going to do that for purposes of timing. You should have my contact information. I can do a one-on-one -on -one, um, and answer your specific questions, and I've done this for other people. If you want me to guide you through the, the premium calculator, walk you through some more examples, I'm happy to do that. If you need advice on um, addressing specific questions, please feel free to give us a call. Feel free to give me a call. Again, Leon will be sending all of our contact information um, so you can reach out to us. One thing I should tell you here. This is only showing standard plans. So in the marketplace, people will have what are known as standard plans, which the standard plans are going to have the same out-of-pocket expenses. So you can rely on that. And then they're going to be non-standard plans. Each insurer was given the option to have a, a set number of standard um, and non-standard plans. And you do not see the non-standard plans. You will be able to explore those. Um, you are likely to get the question of out-of-pocket expenses, out-of-pocket, I'm not, I'm sorry, out-of-network uh, options. There will be out-of-network options at the silver and platinum or gold. There's only two categories, and I am blanking on it. I think you can get uh, out-of-network options at the silver and platinum levels. Only on those two, again, um, that's a super advanced um, question, your answer, answer at this point should be yes. There's going to be out-of-network options in the marketplace. If it gets more specific than that, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we have 10 minutes. Um, any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to us. As I mentioned, there's so much more information that we can go through that was in part covered in your training but probably not highlighted. Um, I should probably address small businesses, right? So what are we doing to counsel small businesses? I did come across this chart that I'm going to find it and send it out to everyone where it had more information about the different plans being offered and the different uh, premiums. So once I am able to get back on the computer and find that chart, we're going to send it around. That may be useful to be able to do that. 
um, work with us. I mean, hopefully we'll be able to get into the marketplace in the next um, day or so and be able to access it. For those who will not be able to access the marketplace, I will make that available and maybe, uh, again, we'll follow up with, with an optional webinar to be able to discuss that and how do you address small business needs. Questions. I think we're, we're getting a lot of questions, which um, is great. So uh, we're going to try to get to as many as we can. In the uh, next seven minutes. I'm going to start with the ones related to the segment Carolina was just doing. The first question, do you have any info on the plans and what they offer in their formularies? So what we do have information is on the um, kind of like the overview, what's the deductible, what's the maximum um, out of pocket, and the different uh, cost sharing. It's actually called uh, something to the cost sharing. We will send that around. Formularies, no, that's really advanced. We wish we had that information to know what prescription drugs. I think some of you have expressed concern that you know you may have clients with particular needs, and you should definitely be exploring their prescription or medic meds needs because in the exchange, um, insurers have to cover different tier levels of, of prescriptions, and there's different costs for those tiers. So you want to explore what prescription your client needs. You will only really be able to do that once the marketplace is up and running. Um, as we move forward, if you're one of those groups that have not been certified and you have a burning question from a client, remember, refer it to us. We, we should be able to get on the website and explore with a client. You will still be getting credit for that assistance because you're going to be tracking it in your database, okay? And a, a follow-up, is that info only available on the Marketplace website? Um, the cost, the, for the, what I just mentioned in terms of the um, cost sharing and deductible for, for the different, for the standard plans, that's available, uh, it's, it's a one, I don't want to say a one-pager, it's a four-pager, I want to say back and front, and, and, and we have a copy of it because it was used at the Navigator training, it's very small print. Yeah, it goes over the different metal tiers, and also in the glimpse that we got of the marketplace system, the formularies are uploaded. So the formularies are uploaded. You know, it's possible um, for, for people who have not gone through training that you can help the client um, through the website and do their own enrollment application, meaning the client would be setting up their own account and exploring that. Um, Nora, do we have any, like, should should or should staff that have not been trained or gotten through the marketplace should they if there's a need, should they guide the client as if the client was doing the enrollment process and just track it on our database? Yeah, I think if they can <coughs> and they understand the process, yes. Uh -huh. If you can, if you understand the process, um, you know you you can technically go in there and tell the client. You have to be upfront with the client of how you're doing things and your limitations. Mm -hmm. um, I, in the future, you know, you should be able to add the client into your dashboard and continue with the follow-up. Why? Because um, one of the key aspects of the marketplace is that anyone can start the application at any time. If they find that they need help, then they can go ahead. The other thing about formularies, feel free to call Maximus. They should be able to have that information, we hope. Uh, because they have access to, to the website. If not, um, again, we're hoping, crossing our fingers, that we will be able to access everything that is on the marketplace and explore those specific options. In the marketplace, there is a place to, to um, put in the client if they already started the process and then go in and put their information which we should be able to do more training about that once we're able to get in and, and sort of see um, how that works to be able to guide you through it. Okay, two more questions, and um, again, we're going to answer the rest of the questions um, through email. We'll follow up. Can we advise people about what we believe their best option is? Advice is a tricky question. You can educate a person. I know from experience 
especially when you have clients that, you know, they come to you because you're the expert, right? You, you have, I don't want to say a great burden on your shoulders, but you are a figure of authority and they're coming to you obviously because they fear they're going to quote unquote make a mistake. They're going to tell you, I don't want to mess this up. I want it to work for me. I don't want to, you know, have to repay, let's say, at the end of the year. So the key is to educate the client. The client will push you and push you and they'll say, well, what do you recommend? What do you suggest? You know best. You've been through this route. Highlight again your concern. Right? So if you're concerned about the Bronx plan, you will say, this is the concern, as I mentioned before, you should consider this and that. If the client, you know, hits that point where they're looking at you, again, try as best as possible. From our perspective, the answer is no. You know best. And that's all we're going to say about that. And what, 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 <clears throat> but following up with what, Carol, what Carolina said, you can simplify the options to the level that it's easy for the consumer to make a decision. So if the consumer is still saying, which one do you advise, maybe you can simplify the, the make, maybe make a comparison, like do two columns. These are the, the, the options that better, better suit your needs, but this is, these are the pros and cons. Uh, yeah. And maybe simplifying the decision process for them would make it easy. Great. So uh, the last question is, is my closing question and answer. So it's amazing. I mean, I think you're all making part of history. As I was getting ready to come into work, I thought everyone should get a picture of this week. Take a group picture. Take a picture of yourself because one day you're going to look back and, and you want to remember how you look, um, whether it's excitement, a little bit concern of like the 70 plus calls you're getting, the media attention you're getting. Take a moment, pause, breathe, reflect that you are part of history. You are in it. We are going to succeed all together. You have us as a partner. We are here to help you. That is going to wrap up this session. I want to make an announcement for the New York State Health Foundation groups. You're going to be joining a separate conference call. You're going to drop this call, this webinar, and you're going to dial the number. What's going to happen is that I am going to exit this webinar and go with you to be able to have that. <coughs> Downstate groups, thank you very much for your feedback. We apologize if we had a rocky start and we kept repeating the same question as to whether you had gone through through the database or not, through not the database, through the marketplace or not. Um, just know that our monthly meetings will get better in the sense that we will have something more concrete, more consistent, and the flow will be seamless. Uh, you can drop the call if you want to hang out and hear what other groups are saying. You're more than welcome. It is your time. Upstate groups, uh, stay on the line. Your case rounds are going to start in about two minutes. Again, thank you we will be addressing your questions. New York State Health Foundation groups, I will um, talk to you in just a minute through the conference call. Thanks a lot.